I am the very model of a shadow running samurai. I've razor claws and dermal plates and target sensing cyber eyes. I know the gangs of Redmond and I ride a wizard motorbike. I'm very well acquainted with a fixer known as Magic Mike. I may not have Femix Rix, but I know just how to swing a blade in such a way to guarantee my target simply won't evade. I understand unwritten rules of mercenary etiquette. Etiquette. Like splitting looters, stealing kills, or how Yakuza settle bets. I'm very good at cleaving skulls or stabbing things without a fuss or taking trophies from awakened critters and immaculus. In short, you'll find no better suited member for your team than I, for I'm the very model of a shadow running samurai. I'll take the toughest missions, always eager to test out my skill. No matter the opponent, I can register another kill. I've made my reputation as a warrior decked out in chrome. I've worked for folks named Johnson breaking into the Tacoma Dome. I'm stronger than a Wendigo with muscles cultured in a vat. My lungs can filter toxins and not once an ounce of body fat. I'm swifter than a cheetah thanks to wired reflexology. Reflexology. Hmm. I'll get your decker in and out of Renrakua Karlaji. Then I can get the new and we were promised for the day to steal. I'd several break, but essence loss have left me quite lacking in feels. Don't bother me even trying, because I'm never taken by surprise, for I'm the very model of a shadow running samurai. They never see me coming when I work to infiltrate a place. I move so fragging swiftly that you'd swear I thought it was a race. But if you see a cyber psycho coming at you like he's nuts, you'll never even realize that I've already sliced out your guts. That's not to say I do not have affinity for gunnery. I've got a smart like Ingram that I use for long-range funnery. In short, it doesn't matter if I'm using swords or pistolry. Pistolry. Aha. You'll say that my quarry never stood a chance in history. So take me on your run because I'm plucky and adventury, more talented than anyone you'll hope to meet this century. If anyone says different, then they're telling you a goddamn lie, cause I'm the very model of a shadow running samurai. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mildra, and I'll be your Gaming Monk for the evening. You know, there are some times where I have to accept being in the minority over something. In this case, it's in regard to edition wars and comparing editions. Maybe I'm just out of the loop, but I've never held too much attachment to one particular edition of one particular game. Whether that's because I spend time with so many different games, or lack a true fallback game, I'll leave that up to you. Beyond that, it's hard for me to get all riled up about editions when you've heard the song and dance so many times. It's like hearing your favorite song on repeat for too long. Or hearing a song when somebody was jukebox bombing. Not that I would do anything like that as far as you know. So when I saw the divisiveness that occurred with Shadowrun's 6th edition, I kept engagement to a minimum at first. Easy to do when everyone's talking past each other, but I wanted to look at it with fresh eyes. Because of that, I'll be delving into it not based on what changed, but rather it succeeds at what it's aiming for. With that said, let us venture into the 6th world of Shadowrun, chummers. At 322 pages, this book is... mixed. While it's certainly a little less bloated than previous editions, the layout continues to be the bane of their existence. A chunk of this is due to Shadowrun's love of tables, and in other cases, it's because of a jumping problem. While the production values are still on point, and I didn't see as much reused art, navigation is going to be an acquired taste for some parts. Plus side, there is an index. Downside, it's not in the dead back as much as it is just before a table appendix. Personal gripe, but still a gripe. The last time we tackled Shadowrun with Anarchy, we made an adept. Well, why not make this time a hat trick? So we'll reintroduce Fox into this series, albeit with a different setup. Much like previously, Shadowrun's 6th edition uses the priority system. This means you have to grade your meta type, abilities, skills, starting magic, or resonance if you're playing a technomancer, and resources. We'll be going with meta type E, resources D, magic C, skills B, and attributes A. For our meta type, we'll go with elf, granting us its attribute ranges and low light vision. This also grants us an adjustment point, which we'll place in magic. Our resource is D, so we have 50,000 new yen to spend for later. For magic, we picked a C, granting us a magic rating of 2, plus the points from attribute spending. This grants us 2 points worth of adept powers. We'll go with Adrenaline Boost 4, Strength Boost 6, Enhanced Accuracy, Pain Resistance 2, Wall Running, and Improved Agility. For skills, we gained 24 points 
to spend on both that and specializations if need be. We'll be placing it in the following spread. Athletics 4, Biotech 3 with a first aid specialty, Close Combat 6 with an edge specialty, Outdoors 2, Perception 4 with a visual specialty, and Influence 2. We also gain City Speak as our native language and Japanese as a basic language, as well as the Arcana and Urban Brawl knowledge skills. Now, since we went with an A priority for attributes, we have 24 points to spend on a range of 1 to 6. Our base scores on attributes will be Body 5, Agility 5, Reaction 3, Strength 4, Willpower 2, Logic 2, Intuition 3, Charisma 2, Edge 5, and Magic 6. After priorities have been selected, we can add positive and or negative qualities, which can modify our Karma, Shadowrun's version of experience, at the end of the process. We'll go with Long Reach and the Dragon Slayer Mentor Spirit for positives, along with AR Vortigo, Honorbound, and Allergy for negative qualities. For Karma, we have 50 points to spend. We'll be putting them in the following. Plus 1 to Charisma, Initiation level 2, and subsequently granting us the Adept Centering and Masking Metamagics, the Weapons Manufacturers and Magical Traditions Knowledge Skills, as well as raising our Japanese to Expert. Lastly, Gear. We'll be spending our 50 grand on a Katana, a Telescoping Staff, a Bow with 20 Arrows, an Armor Vest, an Emperor Comlink, a Grade 3 Fake Sin, two months of Middle Lifestyle, and a Scorpion Motorcycle leaving us with 16.1k in Nguyen. Character creation is certainly streamlined to a significant amount, especially the skill spread, which is no doubt going to be controversial. I understand where that particular issue is coming from, but time has soured me on the massive skill list. That said, I did notice a few issues. First, I don't see any option to use a traditional point-by approach instead of the priority system. There are also a few things left unclear, like whether or not special attributes can be improved with attribute points in creation. I did so here because it didn't make sense not to. When it comes to karma spending, I really don't see the reason to have active skills and attributes be the same cost. Training time aside, one would think skills would be cheaper to offset their usage limitations. Lastly, the min-max problem that plagues games with an advantage-disadvantage phase can still happen here. There's potential here, but it is... rough. Now Shadowrun uses D6s. A lot of D6s. After all, that's been a meme for years. But in all seriousness, the core mechanic remains the same as it has. Attribute plus skill in D6s, 5 and 6 counts as hits. This is compared against the target number of hits. If half the dice roll as 1s, then the action has a glitch, or a critical glitch if the roll fails. This means something extra happens in the effects for or against you. Also known to me as the and but rule. However, Edge has been overhauled into a momentum-like system instead of merely extra effort in a way. In this case, Edge feels like it's integrated the Q system of Shadowrun Anarchy. There's a small pool of Edge actions as well as die roll modifiers that can be taken advantage of. In addition, Edge is greened much more liberally, with the implication that your Edge pool is something that should be in constant flux, moving up and down through use and regaining. Lastly, there's the possibility of a wild die, which can add 3 hits if it rolls a 5 or 6, but if it rolls a 1, all 5s rolled are cancelled. Edge changes aside, combat works similarly to how it's done in the past. The edge factor is at the forefront here, since things like environment, gear, and die pool differences can contribute to edge gain. This can range from re-rolling a single die, to making 1s and 2s count as glitches, as well as several actions that require 1 to 5 edge. Regardless, you can't gain more than 2 edge around, and an edge is always capped at 7. Other than that, combat feels smoother in this edition, though this does come at a sacrifice of some detail. That's going to be one of those contentious things that's beyond my capacity to um, delve into. Now, I will confess that I started late with Shadowrun, since 3rd edition was my introduction, and I didn't truly embrace it until 4th. Because of that, I don't have the frame of reference others might regarding how Shadowrun is meant to be played, though the same thing could be said with my D&D history. This means I'm not going to have the same perspective that I've seen with Shadowrun 6th edition. In the weeks leading up to this, I've seen every change picked apart, as I often do. In some cases, I saw people claim that Shadowrun had been casualized, a bit hyperbolic if you ask me. But where do I stand? 
I like it. It's got problems, I will admit, but Shadowrun 6th Edition in a weird way reminds me of Feng Shui, with its emphasis on keeping people in the action through its uses of set pieces. However, I don't think its potential is quite realized just yet. There's some parts that need to be better explained, and I think that the new Edge system has the potential to be abused or underused. Or sometimes both. Even so, this definitely is a less intimidating Shadowrun that I could easily see myself running with non-chummers to bring them into its fascinating setting. So with all that in mind, I'm willing to give the game a stamp of recommended. However, it's with the caveat of waiting for a 6th edition version of the Runner's Toolkit. Now, I'm certain this will inevitably release, and when it does, I may revisit this review to see if that's enough to bump it to strongly recommended. This is definitely going to be divisive, and it's not going to be for everyone. But for me, I'm willing to sign off on it. Now, if you'll excuse me, this job's gotten a bit too hot, and I need to head back to the safe house.